Hello, welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's July 30th, 2019, and we have a great watch list for you. And I'm handing this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, so just keep it short and sweet. So we're going to talk about Tesla, Boeing, SLS, NAK, and Apple. So let's start. Uh, so I just want to talk to you guys, obviously, about Tesla, because, you know, for the last couple of days, this stock's been running beautifully in a very nice channel, and Jim will talk about the chart momentarily. But, you know, they also did mention, I was reading an article today that, you know, they, they are getting into um, some solar investments. Um, they're looking to take on natural gas plants. Apparently, they announced a mega pack battery, and Jim can show you the a picture of what it looks like. It's actually really cool. Um, it is the largest energy storage product to date. And basically, they're going to use it to support energy grid usage during peak hours. They're going to store three megawatt hours of clean wind solar energy that's subplanting natural gas peaker plants. And what they're going to do is they're going to link it together and it'll be deployed in four California locations, which is what they actually announced earlier this week, actually yesterday. Um, so, you know, we'll have to, you know, they're involved in so many different things. I mean, the energy product has accounted for $368 million of Tesla's um, $6.4 billion of revenues um, that they've had. Um, so compared to other power plants, uh, Tesla says that the cost millions of dollars every day to operate because they fire up whenever the utility grid can't give enough power to meet peak demands and that the mega pack, which is this picture here that you're seeing, would actually be more efficient. So, you know, they've also built, if you guys remember back in 2017, the largest lithium ion battery in the world was built in Australia. And it was designed to save $40 million in the first year alone. So, you know what, there's always something going on with Tesla. So, I mean, right now I'm bullish on the stock um, just because of what I'm seeing here on the pattern of the chart. Uh, it had a bit of a pullback towards the end of the day. But I'm going to let Jim go right ahead and take us right to Tesla's chart. Jim, right over to you. All right. This is Tesla. I'm going to pull up the yearly chart. I just erased all my trend lines. So we're going to start fresh here. I see more or less a support level right here at 233.78. Right now, or after hours, we're at 242.03 with a closing of 242.26. So it pulled back just a little bit. We got another one right here at 226, so I'm going to put that on there. And I'm just drawing a few trend lines in here to kind of get where we're going to see what's going on here. And we got another one right there at 239.33. So I'm going to pull up. You see, we did have a hard sell off back here when we called this low back at 177. And ever since then, we've had a green candle almost every day until earnings came out. And when that happened, we had a four. Had a couple days sell off or consolidated into a head and shoulders, and then had a breakout today. And what I mean by head and shoulders, you can see what I'm saying on a daily. We had like this low right here, and then this bottom spinning top, and then we had this engulfing candle for the next two couple days. We're going to pull up the 20 day now and see if I missed anything here on resistance levels. We did have a nice little run here in the past two days. We called this out at 227. Ever since then, we closed up here today at 242.26. And we're going to draw a little trend line right here for a support level at 241.50. Then I see another little resistance right up here, right around the 246.49. And another one right here at the 248.38. So let's pull this up to a daily. First, I'm going to just get one more look at that 20 day. I'd say support's going to be no lower than 233.78 if it decides to pull back. We do have another one right here. This even looks better. The 235.84. And then we've got another one right, oh, I'm going to say right there, about the 237.46.86. So we're going to pull up the daily one minute now. This is how I'm going to call it out. We had a little consolidated area right in here between 237.86 and 239.33. So I'm going to call that 239.33 probably your second support. 
your first one's going to be right up in here right around the 240 area 24008 resistance to break is going to be the 24309 we did have a 24336 high the next target will be 24488 so we're going to run this through you one more time we do have a low 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 support at 23584 if it decides to pull back your second your third support is going to be this 23786 your second support is going to be right in here between 239.33 and 240.08. And then your first one, which I think we can hold at the 241.50 with the resistance levels of the next two at 243.09 and 244.88. I am bullish on this trade. We have had two good green days on this stock. Earnings weren't very good, but also keep in mind. Tesla always comes out with good news, and I just think the sell-off was needed, kind of overdone, and that's Tesla. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be another one that had a good pullback, and now it's starting to bounce back, and that's BA. You Boeing. know what? BA. Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Boeing. What do you want to say? That's it. Okay. So, Boeing, you know what? Even, you know, it still has news out there circulating you know, that there's still issues with this max air delay and getting things back on track. But, you know, you got to sometimes, you know, put that noise aside. I mean, how many months can the stock stay this low? I mean, it's, it's I will say, I mean, it's dropped significantly from where it was, you know, a couple weeks back, just before the earnings it had that nice little run and, uh, you know, the stocks pulled back. But you know what? I kind of think that we're now going to begin an uptrend on the stock. And I did see a lot of block trades today um, happening here. And, uh, you know, we could see some sort of nice move here, reversing back up. Um, I mean, I don't really think we're going to see this go below 330. Um, but certainly, uh, definitely trying to recover and rebuild uh, the gains here that it's lost. So, Jim, let's hear about BA because... It looks like it's in an interesting uptrend. Yeah, same as with Boeing. It had pulled back on earnings at a minus 582 per share. So she did drop down, and she's dropped down for the last, and I call this my five-day pullback, where she pulled back. She pulled back one, two, three, four days, and then she started bouncing up today. So we had a low support at 336.56. I told Vegas, I said that was overdone, done too much. We, I mean, we had we were bullish on this stock up here before earnings came out. We were talking about a 390 resistance. We did hit a high of 382.48 with a resistance level right here at 380.59. So she did consolidate two days after that and then had the drastic sell-off. And it's a huge sell-off to me. It's about... 50 bucks pull back on this trade in a matter of four days so we started bouncing up today i'm going to pull up the daily one minute show you what i called today in the room i called an ascending triangle breakout once that triangle hit there right i mean right where i called it too it started breaking out and she went ahead and ran up to a high of 347 broke my resistance of 347.10 with a high of 340 763 after hours and we just hit 34769 right here it's that one share bot there <laughs> but that's that so we're going to call a support level right down here at the neckline or the resistance line of that breakout channel and that was right at 34330 your second support is going to be right here at 34598 and the first one's going to be right here and I'm going to adjust this to 346.72 and then the resistances that we're going to see I'm going to pull up the 20 day one more time we've got some resistances I got a 349.42 and then I got another one past that it's going to be this 352.92 so today in the room we did call a breakout channel on ascending triangle I'm going to give you those resistance levels if you want to jot these down on paper here before I get back to that. 349.42 and 352.92 are going to be my resistance levels. And then I'm going to pull this daily one minute and I'm going to give you the supports. Like I said, that low support should be right around 345.26. That should hold. If it doesn't, 
will start going off into sell-off territory. But I think that 340, 345, what I say, 345.30 is going to hold right there. Then your second support is going to be this 346.04 and your first one at 346.72. And that's going to be BA. We're bullish on the trade right now, but yet keep in mind, you know, this can, the way I see this thing run, it runs for a week and then it pulls back, it runs and it pulls back. Right now we're on a, we're on a run and that's going to be Boeing. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be SLS. Okay, so this is for Sell Us Life Sciences. You know, they did announce uh, back at the mid June, June 18, you know, they had an offering. They closed the offering of $15 million. Um, and you know, you all gotta wonder sometimes these biotechs, like, what are they doing with the money? So, um, you know, they did say that they're going to use the proceeds from the offering to commence the pivotal phase three of their clinical candidate, the GPS, um, in acute myeloid leukemia patients following the, the complete remission of uh, the continuation of its phase one and two trial. Um, and also they're using some of that for general corporate purposes and funding its working capital. So obviously they're gonna use it for some salaries and expenses. So that's what they mean by that. So um, gotta keep this on watch. Uh, seeing a lot of uh, activity on the stock lately, especially specifically today. Uh, people taking it as a swing trade. I have a position here as well uh, that I took today. and really because we're there's a lot of things going on in the pipeline on this actual stock so we're just waiting for some future news to come out what is the news well we just want to know what's happening with the items in their pipeline and that's if you go to the website uh you can see they have quite a few things in the pipeline we're waiting to hear information from the phase three protocol which is for the acute myeloid leukemia uh it's reviewed by the fda we're waiting for that and we're waiting for that um, and then, you know, they have a lot of other things as well. You can visit the website um, to see, but we, you know, we're just waiting for that information on this AML. So when are we gonna get it? We don't know anytime. This could be weeks before we get something, but again, uh, people are buying the stock, holding the stock. You know, you don't have to do anything. Just keep it on your watch and maybe see if, you know, if you start, it starts moving in the right direction. You may want to take a starter and then wait for the move or wait for the news. Um, again, um, just keep this on watch if you're not in it and uh, see for yourself if this trade would be of interest to you. Uh, Jim, let's hear about this chart because it's uh, quite interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pull up the yearly chart first, one year daily. And, and I like to emphasize to a lot of traders that it's not all about your trend lines and and um, well, it's about your trend lines, but it's a lot to do with history of a stock and the candlesticks of a trade. And then, like this one right here is pulled back all the way to 10, 10 cents here just a couple weeks ago, about a month and a half ago. It had a high of 246. So I'm looking at the history of this stock on a yearly chart. You see, it had a double top right here, right around the 246, and ever since then it's pulled back. So I'm going to magnify this up a little bit, and I'm going to try to find me a couple places where I can call resistance and support. And I see one right here, right around that 2296 area, and then I see a gap fill that needs to be filled right up here at 37.3. And then I'm one more, oh, maybe right in here. We'll just add another trend line right there and another one right here. You see where I'm talking about on these candles right here. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day right now. Got another trend line right here. I want to put at the 1961 area. Then I'm going to add a low support right here, right around the 1371. And then we had another kind of pivot point area right in here, say around almost 15 cents. So I'm drawing these in patterns and where they consolidate. Where, where they hit the candlesticks kind of hit a couple of times we got a hard had a hard resistance today at 1784 and broke it it hit down here at the bottom of the 14s where it started to begin the run and then here in the last two days it's ran all the way to after hours right now at 2002 which we did close at 2015 
So the next resistance we're going to call up here is going to be right around in this area, and that's going to be the 2139, that 23 cent area, and then maybe right above it, right around the 24 cent area, with a long resistance for right now on the 20 day chart of 2588. So this is how I'm going to call this trade. I'm going to call the first support right down here, right around 1773. I'd like to see that hold because we do have a pattern right here where it kind of hit a top, pulled back, hit a top, and then pulled back. So that's going to be my first support at 1733. The second one's going to be right here at 1639. And then you got that 15, you got that 1371 to 15 cent area where it could pull back and retrace and, and start fresh again. I am bullish on this trade right now, especially after what I've seen here in the past four days. We've had a pretty good little run where she pulled back, consolidated at that 1371, and then had the breakout for the past two, two days up here at 20 cents. See if we can get this up to 2588, maybe 28 here on this wick of this candle up here at 288, and that's going to be hard resistances right around that 24 cent area. If we can buzz past that, we'll get another four cents out of it. This is SLS. Keep a good eye on it. And this is another great trade today that was very bullish. I mean, really bullish, this stock was. And it's NAK. N-A-K. Yeah. N-A-K. Well, that is a really nice chart. And you know what? I spotted this as soon as I saw that. And this is, by the way, before any news came out. Um, this is Northern Dynasty Minerals. The stock was up more than 34%. Uh, they apparently emerged that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is doing away with the proposed restrictions on mining operations in Alaska's Bristol Bay. So, you know what? This actually popped. I saw it pop on Scanner, and I thought, what's happening here? I started looking at the tape on this on this actual stock, and I said, you know what? I'm going to uh, call this trade called the trade i think it was at 65 cents maybe a little bit later than what's been called out there but nevertheless i said that this stock's going to go to 70 79 um if it would break maybe we could see a dollar and you know what we did really great on this we hit those two numbers bang 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 and uh even after hours it did hit 92 currently still holding at 88. jim Let's hear about the chart. All right. Well, she Miss Vegas called this to a T. We both kind of consulted each other today, and we both definitely thought this was a bullish trade today. We did hit a high of right around 95 cents right before close, and it did pull back here to a support level right now at 86 cents, closing at 91.40. So let's pull this up to a yearly chart. Just have a yearly look at it real fast and see what we're looking at. You see this big old head and shoulders that came down. We had did have a high right here at one time, right around the 79.59 area. She called out to the T. It was down here at the bottom, and it ran up and hit that 79. The next resistance I had on here was 84.13. We hit that one, and then it ran all the way up and stopped at a resistance level of 91.5, which we did have a 95 high on it. So we're going to pull up the 20 day, take a good look, and this can go higher. It can go to the peak, to the top of the mountain at 112, and maybe the next resistance level, if it decides to go ahead and break that dollar, we're going to go to 102, 101.8, 106.8, and then that 112 on a yearly, daily chart. Pull up the 20 day now and have a real fast look at it. We did break the resistance levels that we needed to break here at 62 cents. And ever since then, that tape was just hot. And this was a late in the day trade. Come out late in the day. It did have a pullback this morning to support level of right around 52.93. So let's pull this up to a daily. We're going to show you what we saw on this thing. I'm going to erase this here little drawing that I posted earlier. You can see it was about a little after midday, after lunch, when the fat cats came back from lunch and started to break out. We did have a low of 51.49. It did run up to about 53, 54 cents, and all of a sudden, bam, she took off. She pulled back and she hit them moving averages, run that nine most of the day. Then every time it touched back and hit that 34, it was a strong buy. 
Now I have three different moving averages on here. I have the 9, the 34, and the 200. I use them for support levels if I'm in a trade that likes to run and break out. I like to scalp trades like this, and I scalped this thing twice today. I got out of it a little too soon here at 84 cents. I should have took Miss Vegas, or uh, no, I didn't. I got out before that 84. It was right around the 75 area, and it ran up and it hit that 79 that she called out. And then she really started taking off and run up and hit 95 right before close and pulled back. So we pulled back to that resistance level at 84.13 that I had for these 2018 trend lines. These dark gold ones are trend lines that I had back in 2018. She pulled right back to it and hit that and bounced off it three different times. And here we are just kind of hovering around in this little channel between 84 and 91.5. I'm going to put a resistance level up here at 93 that we do need to break. 93.72 is going to be the long resistance. It's going to be probably the second resistance. First one at 91.5. Now, a lot of times when I see something like this that breaks out, it'll pull back a little bit. And then the next high will be a little bit less retracement from the previous high. But if it does break up to a triple top at 93.72, it's going to break up to a dollar, dollar two, and then those other highs that I mentioned earlier, that 112. But we have a low support right here at 76 cents. That's where I want it to hold. That's where that peak was. And then the second support is going to be at 79.58. With that first one right down here at 84.13. With the resistances that we need to break will be that 91.5 and that 93.72 for a triple top breakout. And that's NAC. And Miss Vegas, that was a beautiful call today. And you stuck with the trade. You saw the volume. You saw the momentum, and you kept us on alert with it. And the last one we're going to talk about is going to be, and she is a great chartist, and she does, and I just have a lot of respect, probably more for her than I do myself. The next one, we're, <laughs> next one we're going to talk well, about. Yeah. The next one we're going to talk. Apple, Apple. Apple. So everyone's been waiting for Apple. So you know, Apple did beat analyst expectations top and bottom line but you know here's what you guys need to know like, i mean the revenue was 53.8 billion versus 53.4 earnings per share 2.18 versus 2.10 uh service revenue this is the number you want to keep an eye on okay this is 11.5 billion versus 11.9 iphone revenue 26 billion versus 26.5 so the stock has been trading currently um tim cook did say it's their biggest june quarter ever uh, great growth from both wearables, strong performance from iPad and Mac, and significant improvements in the iPhone trends. Um, you know, they're trying to pull away from their heavy reliance on iPhone sales as to make it the largest source of revenue. And they're really trying to focus more on services. And the biggest piece of the company's plan, its Apple TV streaming service, is expected to debut also later this fall. And they did also recently announce that it is acquiring Intel's modem business to allow them to develop their own 5G modem for upcoming iPhone models. Um, and all of this comes against the backdrop of increased scrutiny of major tech companies like Apple, which are being targeted for potential antitrust violations. Um, you have to also remember that one of the things that the Apple does is they actually sell their own app in the App Store which actually competes directly with third-party apps in the storefront. You know, there's also the matter that 30% cut is what Apple takes from the sale of every app purchase from the app store. And Spotify has been very vocal about its opposition to Apple's app store fees. And, uh, you know, people have been wondering, you know, they're going to get tariffs. You know, we, over, we already know what's going on with that trade talk. Obviously, they're not going to get a waiver that protects them from getting tariffs. Uh, but, you know, we can see after hours the market's liking so far uh, what Apple's trading at right now, live as I'm looking here, live as we speak. It's at 218.48. Won't be surprised personally for me to see this at 220. I'm going to turn it over right now to Jim and give us a live report on what's happening with Apple and what we can see. Yep. Here's the Apple. This is a TTM trend chart that I use. Usually tells me if a stock's bearish or bullish. We had a big time where it was bare down here to about 142, and then we had a good five or six months where it was bullish, 
And then we had this last pull back here to support level right around 173.19. And then ever since then, we've just had a couple days of bears attack this stock. We do have a resistance level. We got a break at 211.18, and we did that here after hours. We got some other ones that we're going to draw up in here. We got one right here at 216.93. So I'm just kind of, we do, we're at 218.18 right now. I mean, this thing's really took off here real strong. We got another one right here at 222 something. So let me see if I can find an equilibrium right in here. We got another one right here at the 213. So I want to get inside of this area. There's a little support system right there. We're going to pull up the 20 day, get a good look at the 20 day right now. We are at a 20 day high here after hours. Gosh, I wish we'd have got some options on this one here. Thing pulled up after hours. We now target of 219.59. Support level is going to be right down here, right around the 210.55 area. I kind of would expect this thing to pull back tomorrow and re consolidate a little bit and then bounce back up and hit the new highs but right now after hours we're at 218.34 let me pull up this yearly chart just one more time we got a 218 216 we got a 219.59 and a 222.25 we're going to be our long resistances on this trade that's 219.59 and 222.25 Pull up this 20 day one more time. I'm going to pull up the daily, see if I can get some other pullback supports. We've got a 214 right here, and maybe one right here at 217.88. And kind of this, so pullback support no lower than 211.88. We got the second support right here at 214.39. And that first one here at 216.93 with a 217.88 for your first. And then resistance to breaks can be that 219.59. And that's going to be Apple. And that continues, that finishes up our aftermarket report. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Apple's really nice. It might be a nice little bitty put call maybe when you get in and pull back it to that 214 area. That's going to be your third. Your second is going to be right here at 216.93, and your first support is at 217.88, with a resistance that we got to touch to is 219.59. And also want to bring you to my web, our website. We have a place where you can sign up for the chat service right here. Set up instructions. We also have an app. We also have a Twitter page. Hit that follow button. Miss Vegas posts alerts in here all the time and miss vegas you have anything you'd like to say oh uh, you know what i think a lot of action has been happening on uh on the market you know but i also want to mention here so can you go to our website just we added a new feature so i'll probably go more into it maybe on the weekend but if you go to the trader tools uh there is a new feature there called scans if you see that the very top called stock scan yep and then if you go to the right, there's a, beside the word refresh, there's a little arrow button. You can click on it and yeah. you can, you can then, then pick what you want to look at. Do you want to scan for volume? Do you want to scan for short float, new 52 week high dips on uptrends? So let's, for example, just pick one and then we'll go in more depth on Sunday. Click on the one for new 52 week highs. You click it, let the, let our software do the search for you. And um, it might take a little bit longer than what I want, but it's obviously going to pull all the stocks for there you at 52 week highs. And, you know, this is nice because this is really good. And then it's very, it's a very, like we tried to make this as really easy for you to look at as possible. Um, you know, you have the ticker, you have the price, you could, it shows you the float and the, and what's outstanding. I love that it highlights how much the institutions own. What is the short float percentage? Because I love, um, you know, b barbecues. Um, it shows you the volume. And it also gives you the earnings date. So I'm trying to make sure we give you that the earnings information so that if you decide to take a trade on a stock that's a 52-week high, 
that you're not going to maybe take it when you know earnings is coming. You might want to wait. Um, so this is just trying to make it easy for you to help you find picks. So I know that Jim and I like to share ideas with you, but we're trying and building some scans here to help you as well. So this is, you know, trying to make you self-sufficient and uh, you can, you know, look, look at these up. So hopefully um, you'll like the features that we have. And if you like anything or try them, please give us feedback. I'll go more in depth with you guys on the weekend with Jim. And uh, thank you so much for letting us uh, share that with you. And please uh, feel free to use it and let us know how it works for you. And have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow. Here's a good example of using that. I just clicked on that SMSI. We had, we watched this the other day. It had a nice little breakout. And then here today, probably in, in the trading day, I'll pull up the chart. Just using this as a tool. We did have a breakout on this trade right about midday where we called it out at, not, at 556. Started noticing the volume picked up. Once it broke this little resistance level at 576, it bounced up and created a high up here at 643. So a lot of these 52-week highs are momentum plays. And sometimes, you know, in a lot of cases, they, they pull back a little bit, and then they'll try to break that previous high that it had, uh, thurs uh, it had previously here on Monday at 610. So, yeah, this is a good way to use that tool, and thanks for pointing that out, Miss Vegas. Please. And thank you to Chad who made it for us. So yep. thank you. It's and the we, best video. Yep. This is please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is uh, July the thirtieth. July thirtieth. July thirtieth. We're almost at the end of the month. Have a Tomorrow's great day. Tomorrow's the last day. Yep. Good night, everyone. We love stocks. Thank you.